This is Twit. Rick in San Jose wonders about Bluetooth proximity authentication. Steve, on this week's Security Now, you and Leo were discussing the benefits of unlocking mobile devices with your thumbprint in the context of a recent vulnerability on the Samsung platform. That's good. The Galaxy S5, they had a problem. I don't use thumbprint to unlock my phone. I have a Nexus 5. It doesn't support that. However, I did recently upgrade my timepiece to a Pebble Steel, a smartwatch similar to Google Wear and the iWatch. Uh, one nice benefit of switching to this smartwatch is that now I can have my phone automatically unlock if it detects my watch is in range. This is really useful. It has all the benefits of using the thumbprint from a convenience point of view. However, it has an advantage. I can more easily disassociate myself from my watch than I could from my thumb. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, yeah. Solution yeah, is based on Bluetooth. The Android 5 platform apparently allows me to auto-unlock the device when the operating system detects any devices on my list of Bluetooth devices. You suggested the security of using your thumbprint is less than perfect, but it is convenient from a security point of view. I wonder how this Bluetooth-based solution compares. I know Bluetooth devices are paired with a key and are somehow authenticated, but do you think the Bluetooth authentication is sufficiently secure? How easy would it be for a malicious device to impersonate my Bluetooth watch? I don't recall, but did, did you ever cover Bluetooth on Security Now? Thank you, Ah, uh, Rick. Rick. Maybe a little bit. Episode Maybe 280 bit. and 283. Uh, that was toward the end of 2010, that same year. Uh, we did a, an episode on Bluetooth on December 23rd. That was episode 280. And Bluetooth hacking was a couple weeks later uh, in the middle of January 2011, episode 283. So once again, the content is there. I'll give you the short version, which is what we determined is, okay, there are, there are sort of two pairing methodologies. One is for a device that cannot show you a, a pseudo-random string, which you then enter into the other device, or the other device doesn't have a facility to accept a pseudo-random string. The point is, if you have a display, then you have the uh, ANSA means to enter it on the other end. You have an out-of-band information. You have information visually that is not going over the radio. So that automatically means that no one eavesdropping can, no one eavesdropping on the radio signals can know the information that was conveyed out of that channel, non-radio, that is through the display. So you could, you could securely pair devices where there was a randomly generated token that was transferred out of band in the presence of an eavesdropper with, of any level of power. But many Bluetooth devices, just because they're small, that they're keyboardless or they're displayless, they just don't have the ability to support any kind of an out of band authentication. So there, what you are depending upon is that no one is listening at the moment that you do the pairing. And we joked about it in that podcast back in 280 about, you know, the one, the one vulnerability in the Bluetooth protocol, there is one, is at the instant of pairing. Once they're paired, then they're, they have shared a secret that is never divulged and that keeps them paired without any, without any security risk. And so we, we joked about going out into the middle of an empty parking lot where, where you could see all the way around you and there's nothing near you. And that's when you do your pairing. And then from then on, you're safe. You probably, that maybe that's overkill. But for what it's worth, they, the bottom line is the Bluetooth protocol was well designed. And the trade-offs are understandable and make sense. And if you want much more about it, episode 280 uh, will give you all the information. Of course, that was uh, probably Bluetooth 2 or 3 we were covering. I mean, we're up to 4 now. Yeah, there haven't been any changes oh, in, okay. the, in the, that. Uh, the authentication is the have, same. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you're also in a Faraday cage in your car. So if that's where you're doing the pairing, you're probably almost as good as being in the middle of an empty parking lot. I would say, except that the fact that your cell phone works in your car means that you're oh, not in a fair. You're not, are you? It goes through the windows, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Right. Um, 
Yeah, the the way that this works on uh, Lollipop on uh, Android 5.0 is you do then have to say, okay, uh, yes, I that is a secure device, and when so when I see it, it's okay to unlock. Right. Um, and I think, as I remember, I still have to unlock, but then it does stays unlocked. So you have to unlock the first time. Ah, uh, that's nice. I that think would that's be the way the to right, do it. Right. That's the right trade off. Yep. It all, it's like. Yeah. I was going to say, it's like the way I've designed Squirrel, where the first time you authenticate, you have to right. give it your whole passphrase. Right. From then on, until something happens, like the screen blanks, you're able just to give it a little, just the, the first N characters. Right. Because you don't want it to be in your way, but you still want to make sure that it's it's you. Right. And they, yeah. I can do it uh, by not just by Bluetooth, but by geographic location, too. So my phone, if I unlock it at home or at work, will stay unlocked. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah, I think that's relatively safe. Yeah. Again, we're, we we understand that with their with with these conveniences are trade offs. Yeah. So you could imagine some if it were like really important to spoof your location to your phone, you, that could be arranged. Yeah. But eh, you know how likely is it versus the convenience? Right.